Hello, I'm Chuck Smith, and I'm a member of the ASLA LARE Prep Committee. Our committee, in concert with the Council of Landscape Architectural Registration Boards, created this video to explain how the current Landscape Architects Registration Examination tests your design abilities and your grading and drainage skills on Sections 3 and 4 of the LARE. We will show you actual examples of how your abilities are tested by the new item types that are delivered entirely by computer. You may be thinking about registering for the exam, but you are unsure about how the current computer-administered items can test the things you do every day. Is the exam harder because it doesn't require drawing? Is the format of the exam different than how you work every day? Or are you unsure about how to even begin to study because you're afraid that your knowledge will somehow not translate to the way the exam is structured? The LARE is designed to test those things that landscape architects do that impact the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Even though the item format is different than how you may practice every day, the exam measures the things that you do that impact the public and the environment. Skills such as analyzing sites, locating elements, responding to the client's needs, and even your ability to follow directions and understand codes are tested through the different item types presented on the exam. These are the things that you do every day. Let us show you how the things you do are tested on the LERE. We will use two of the vignette solutions on the ASLA website to demonstrate how your knowledge can be tested in various formats. This is one of the design vignettes that you can find under the LARE prep section of the ASLA website. This is a problem that asks you to prepare a regional park plan. Skills such as analyzing the site, determining land use relationships, and understanding the impacts of your design decisions are required to create a safe and successful design solution. These same skills are tested in the computer delivered format for Section 3 of the LARE. Jim Penrod from CLARB will demonstrate how these skills are tested individually with the new format. The advantage of this type of testing is that you have more opportunities to demonstrate that you have these skills. This is a drag and place item type that can test your abilities to understand the existing site and off-site opportunities and constraints. Just as in a rendered solution, you would need to analyze the site topography, vegetation, and environmentally sensitive areas, as well as the off-site uses and circulation to determine the best location for the elements. The question also gives you a clue as to the use of the project elements, which will help you to determine the proper orientation. The late afternoon use for the soccer field should indicate to you that a north-south direction would be safer than an east-west orientation. The existing vegetation and site topography, as well as the quieter uses to the east, should help you to determine the best location for the soccer field. The placement of the amphitheater is also directed by the topography and the off-site uses. The best location is probably not to, on the east side of the site. The best location takes advantage of the proposed building and parking location and respects the environmental site features, even though you may need to remove some existing vegetation to protect the wetland from construction. A hot spot item such as this one can again test you on your ability to analyze the existing on and off site features. Multiple items like this will allow you to demonstrate your design thinking ability to find the best location for site uses. By removing the drawing component, we can ask several questions like this to determine your analytical thinking ability. By having several items like this instead of one drawing, you have multiple opportunities to demonstrate your abilities. Analyzing a site such as this is a skill you probably use every day in your practice. Many times in practice, you must identify the potential impact of your design and possibly present those facts at a public meeting. Just as was the case in the vignette drawing, you must analyze the proposed use and how it will impact the site and the surrounding neighbors. A park in this area may have an environmental impact on the existing water bodies. You would most likely conclude that access to the site would not need to be obtained off of the reg residential road to the west. 
You would also most likely conclude that the arrangement of the park elements could be done in such a manner to avoid substantial site disturbance. The noise and light pollution from the park like this might be problematic to the existing neighbors to the east, however. You may be thinking, just how does this translate to a grading and drainage problem? Here again is a solution from the ASLA website. This problem requires that you understand existing drainage patterns and know how to manipulate the land to ensure that the environment is protected from contaminated runoff. Jim can show you how CLARB would test these same skills on Section 4 of the LARE. Stormwater management is also a skill that you may deal with on a daily basis. Just as in the vignette problems, you must be able to analyze the existing topography in order to answer this drag and place item. Understanding how runoff flows will allow you to find the best place for this detention basin so that it can capture the runoff from the proposed barn and the existing pasture. Too high in the swale will not capture all the runoff. And out of the swale will, will require extensive site work. So understanding the location of this based on existing topography helps you to demonstrate your ability to provide stormwater management solutions. As in the vignette example, you need to have the ability to calculate grades to protect architectural features as well as provide for adequate drainage on a site. Understanding the architecture that is provided to you and knowing how to establish the correct grades along the foundation such as in this case putting 86.7 in the foundation spot boxes ensures that the building is protected. Making sure runoff is not directed into the building is critical to the success of the project. So if you put a spot like 87.8 in here it's higher than the finished floor elevation and becomes problematic. Being able to understand slope calculation and where on the site to begin is also an important skill that you must have to pr practice the profession safely. In this case, starting at the culvert invert and calculating the minimum slope on the swale, so in this case 86.3 if you do those calculations, demonstrates your basic understanding of grading principles. You could go higher in the swale perhaps 86.5 units. But you must also be able to factor in all of the requirements and realize that 2% away from the building gets you back to that 86.3 elevation. Many times you are provided information from other consultants to create your design. In this case, the drag and place item can include an exhibit to give you some context to help solve the problem. Even though you don't have to draw contours on this grading plan, you must demonstrate an understanding of how the contour profile should look when you have a crowned road. Knowing where to start and knowing that you can double check your figures is all part of this one simple item. Starting from the barn, you should have determined that you must be at least down to 86.0 in the middle of the drive to achieve the 1% slope on the drive. Double checking from the west reveals that you need to be just a bit lower than that to meet the requirements. The culvert also provides information to inform your decision. The invert of the pipe under the spot would be 82.6. From there you need to understand that the one unit pipe plus the one unit of cover restrict how low you can go on the drive. 84.6 would work right in the middle of the drive. However, if you understand the crown on the drive, you would realize that you would not have sufficient cover over the pipe on the south side of the drive if you went that low. Also, part of this item is your ability to understand contour profiles and where contours are located in relationship to spot, uh, spot elevations.
Placing the appropriate contour in the correct locations demonstrates your understanding of proposed grading. The grading process allows for some margin of error in your placements. As you can see, the computer delivered item types test the same skills you are asked to demonstrate when completing the vignettes. These are also the basic skills you use every day in various solutions that you must produce for your clients.